Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. The topic of today will be the Everyman schedules. Everyman was proposed as an alternative to the popular Uberman schedule, which we will talk about in a future video. Pure Doxic, the woman who also named Uberman, also popularized Everyman, the one we now know as Everyman 3. It was introduced as a way to reduce sleep more easily, while staying more in sync with the regular daily rhythms of life. She reported this as a sustainable schedule once her child was a few years old and someone else could watch the child during her naps. It was inspired by the first wave of Uberman attempts from Pure Doxic in the early 2000s and then developed further after Steve Pavlina's lifestyle blog repopularized it in 2007. The repeated experience of most Uberman attempters was to crash uncontrollably for several hours every couple of days. It made sense then to develop these crashes into their own schedule with a 3 hour core. This 3 hour version soon also developed a 3.5 hour variant with benefits in nap flexibility as well as easier adaptation due to having more RAM in the core. At the time this variant was called Everyman 3.5 as a reference to the core length. This may be confusing at times because recent sources such as polyphasic.net, our community's website about this, use the naming convention based on the number of naps as opposed to the core length. Everyman 2 was also developed as an easier variant, with a longer core but only two naps. Everyman 4 was developed as a superhuman compromise between Uberman and E3. We previously covered Everyman 1 in the biphasic video, so we'll start off with Everyman 2 right away. Everyman 2 consists of one core and two naps, with the core being three cycles long, or commonly four and a half hours. It's considered moderately difficult, and this ideal scheduling has the core starting just before midnight, one nap in the morning and one nap in the early afternoon. For what lifestyles is E2 the best schedule? E2 is often chosen by students who can nap before and between classes. Part-time jobs can also often be conformed to this nap spacing. Full-time jobs can also work with this schedule, as long as you can take the first nap right before you start work and have the second one during a lunch break, for example. One of the appeals of the schedule is the relative adaptation difficulty, meaning that work or studies aren't impacted as much by sleep deprivation during the adaptation period. Night owls also often appreciate the schedule due to the possibility of a relatively late core placement. This same bit also appeals to many students wanting to take part in some of the nightlife. It's feasible to start the core at 1 or maybe 2 in the morning. Finally, the schedule is useful if you share a room or even a bed with someone else. It's almost always possible to find a shared either wake or a sleeping time, as long as the other person is willing to also commit to a set schedule. How does this schedule work? E2 has a 4.5 hour core which accounts for three full 90 minute cycles. This means there's enough space for all the SWS to happen in the core, even during adaptation. This allows a greater flexibility in the placement of the core, although the best core placement is still shortly before midnight. Some core time in the graveyard hours, so past midnight, is still recommended for a good balance between REM and SWS sleep. Because there's only two naps of 20 minutes, which will each account for 15 minutes of REM max, there's still a need for an hour of REM to be had in the core. This hour of REM should happen mostly during the second and third cycles of the core. It is recommended that the first nap is placed squarely in the 6 to 9 a.m. REM peak. This virtually guarantees that you will get a lot of REM during that nap. The second nap is best placed at an ideal homeostatic distance from the first, meaning you have to stay awake 6 hours between the naps and then another 8 hours until the core. E2 generally has a pretty broad array of scheduling options, since the core can be placed both relatively early as well as relatively late. The start of the core can be scheduled from as early as 9 in the evening to as late as 2 in the morning, as long as it's consistent. Another reason why E2 is such a popular schedule is that people often have good chances adapting to it called Turkey. We will talk more about this adaptation method in a later video. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it! The next schedule we'll be discussing is Everyman 3. It has a 4 or a 4.5 hour total sleep time, depending on which version you go by. E3 is characterized by having one core and three naps. The first version has a 3 hour core and the second a 3.5 hour core. 
A perk of choosing the 3.5 hour core variant is a slightly easier adaptation as well as a bit more flexibility in the naps once you're adapted. However, it is an additional 30 minutes spent asleep every day. E3 is very restrictive in the placement of the core because all the SWS has to be placed into two cycles, those cycles need to happen during the SWS peak. So preferably the core would start around 9 in the evening. E3 is currently considered one of the most difficult schedules the average adult should be able to accomplish if they really go for it and have adequate adaptation skills. However, there are simply just people that need more sleep. Repartitioning all the SWS into the two cycles of the core can cause some difficulties, as during adaptation, week 2 and 3, some of the SWS might bleed into the naps, causing SWS wakes. Eventually though, none of the naps should have any SWS in them. The earlier RAM favoring placement of the naps also helps to ensure this. Naps at 4, 8 and the next schedule in this group is Everyman 4. E4 is below the minimum sleep threshold and consequently has extremely low success rates. It is strongly recommended that inexperienced polyphasers do not attempt this schedule. If you have reduced sleep needs and do decide to go for Everyman 4, it is imperative that you place your core at the SWS peak and your naps near the RAM peak in the morning. I won't go into the scheduling details further because most people can't sustain this schedule. If you are interested in reading more about it though, I suggest you check out polyphasic.net, link in the description. The last one I want to mention today is Everyman 5. I won't be going over it in detail today because it's almost exclusively used as a gradual adaptation tool for Uberman. More on that in an upcoming video. Next, I want to talk about the extended versions of these schedules. Extended refers to adding an extra cycle to the core, perhaps even two. Most often though, it's just a single cycle of 90 minutes being added. E3 Extended is a very popular schedule, due to the still quite low sleep time, but post adaptation it's very flexible in the naps. Also, the core can be placed as early or as late as can with E2 due to the similar length. It's also great for athletes, because the longer core provides plenty of space for SWS towards physical recovery. E2 Extended is less popular due to the fairly high total sleep time. It's still a great schedule for those under 18, or just those with high regular sleep needs. Or, if you were planning E1, but the nap timings just don't fit. That's all for today. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video. Nap well! Hey, thanks for making it this far. I want to take this time to shout out our Ko-fi page. Donations go a long way with improving the knowledge of the community and help us continue the upkeep of polyphasic.net. We plan on funding experiments and sleep trackers for members of the community in the future. And that in turn helps us make sure the scientific endeavors of polyphasic sleep are kept up. And if you like our content, we would really appreciate it if you click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Also, if you'd like to chat with us, you can join our Discord. This is where most polyphasic sleep related discussions take place. The link will be in the description, as are all the others. Thanks again, and I'll see you later.